Hello everyone, Tom Shanklin here with my lovely wife Susan. Hi. And we are happy to be with you today. We've got some good news for you. and We want to encourage you in the Lord. Susan, it's good to have you with me today. <laughs> we got a, a note from one of our friends uh, a few weeks ago and, and they said, we really like your videos, especially when your wife is with you or when you and Susan are together. So. Um, I plug along on my own sometimes, but um, it's always nice to have you with. Well, it's good to go out in twos. Yeah, team up, that's good, praise Marriage the Lord. Marriage is twos. Yeah. So today we're gonna talk about an encounter with Jesus. And we're gonna I had be... an encounter with Jesus. You did? When I got saved. Yeah, and I did too. It was dramatic. The, the message today is that an encounter with Jesus will change your life. Yeah, you know, I never went back. You know, it was so dramatic that yeah. it's like, I'm not going back where yeah. I came from. And I think that's, you know, when you realize that, I don't know, we haven't talked about that, <laughs> but when, when that happens, uh, you're you have long and how you say that word longevity longevity with the lord you know when sometimes when you're a firecracker you know right and uh you kind shallow of crash roots. shallow roots shallow roots yeah. yeah you don't have any um uh, uh tenacity yeah. to go forward yeah so today we're going to talk about someone who put down some deep roots and we'll be, we're going to be in Luke chapter uh, 19. But let's just have a word of prayer first. Father, we just thank you for your word. We mm -hmm. reverence your word. We thank you, Lord. It is life and it is health. And Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that we our hearts would be open to receive what you have. Mm -hmm. I pray you would anoint us to speak as oracles of God as we get into the word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so uh, we're going to be, as I said, in Luke chapter 19. And I'll begin by reading the first uh, four verses. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. I like that uh, phrase, uh, he sought to see who Jesus was. Uh, there was a desire in this man's life to see Jesus. No doubt he had heard the stories of his miracles and, and he was just, uh, hungry to know about Jesus and that's that's a really important thing but he wanted to see who Jesus was he didn't want just a superficial scan of Jesus he wanted to see who Jesus was well you know he was a short man yeah literally Zacchaeus was a wee little man a wee little man was he <laughs> well you know and I think sometimes we think we are short in stature and the Lord isn't interested in us. Right. But he's interested in every size, every color. Amen. Every shape. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I was thinking about this, how he sought to see who Jesus was. And I think today there's people who really want to see Jesus. Mm. I think there's a scripture that said, sir, we would see Jesus. Uh, we, people want to see the, the Lord, but sometimes the vision of the Lord is obscured uh, by what people put out about Jesus. P and things people, that people get in say. your way. Yeah, they'll get in your way. They'll hinder your vision of the true Jesus. But, you know, we can find out about Jesus in the Word of God. And uh, we can encounter Jesus just like Zacchaeus did. So Zacchaeus ran after Jesus and climbed this sycamore tree mm. to see Jesus. Praise yep. God. All right, now in the fifth verse it says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Jesus saw him. Jesus yes. saw him. 
Jesus had time for him. Jesus sees you. That's right. And Jesus has time for you. Mm -hmm. And he says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming over to your place. We're going to have lunch. You know, too, you know, this thought just came to me, but, you know, Zacchaeus did not think that Jesus would actually see him. Mm. You know, uh, he was still kind of hiding out. <laughs> he was busy trying to see who Jesus was. Yeah. But it must have been a surprise when Jesus looked up into that tree and said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. He, Jesus says, you're important to me, Zacchaeus. Yeah. I'm coming to your house. And you know, yeah. Jesus wants to come to your house. He wants to come to your heart. He wants to come to where you dwell. That's right. He wants to come to where you live. And sometimes we don't think our, our dwelling is acceptable enough, but it is. Yeah. Well, you see, now Zacchaeus, he was a, a chief tax collector, or I think King James says a publican. And, uh, you know, the, this was a group of people in Israel that were despised hmm. uh, because they were collecting taxes for the Romans, and they were also uh, notorious scoundrels. In other words, they, were, they would take advantage of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's a man that was uh, an outcast of society, uh, because of his behavior. And it's interesting that, you know, nothing changed. I mean, he, the social pressure didn't change this man's life. Uh, religious tradition didn't change his life. Uh, there's no behavior modification that could change his life. But Jesus changed this man's life. When he encountered Jesus, everything changed. And it's the same with us. Mm. So, so he, that is... Zacchaeus made haste and came down and received him joyfully. You know, he made haste. You know, if, if the Lord is tugging at your heart, I would act now. Yeah. You know, don't say, ah, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, that's... tomorrow, I'll, I'll, I'll seek Jesus. You know, you get, might get smacked with a, a pickup truck. Well, that, I mean, that's the zeal that Zacchaeus had. And that so often we think back to the time when we came to the Lord and, and many others did too. And a lot of folks came to the Lord and then drifted away, you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. we think, well, why, why didn't we drift away? I mean, we had, we had some really hard things that we went through too. But I think it's that determination, that zeal, that making haste. I want Jesus. I mean, it was like once we saw Jesus and we just began to pursue him and even before really our hearts were transformed we just began to go after him and every time the church door was open we were there well you know with me I knew Jesus forgave me and that's the most powerful feeling you know forgiveness mm -hmm. is so powerful so liberating I mean you have life instead of death you have life. And so so who wants to go back to death? Oh, please, let, let me go back to death. Oh. <laughs> no, I was so excited. I wanted to yeah. keep going with Jesus. I haven't stopped. I, I've had, have had ruts and pits, and I've hit the guardrails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm on, on the road. We keep on going. Keep on keeping on. Amen. Got to keep going. But when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, "This has he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner." People always want to criticize your walk with the Lord. God forbid. You know forbid. it's going to come. God forbid Jesus went to eat lunch with a sinner. Ooh. But you see, that was his mission. He came to yep. seek and to save the lost. Uh, but you know that is not a. Uh, get out a free card to go to the bars. I know some people are gifted and anointed. Right. They can do that, but don't be so deceived that you know you can go hang out with your your old buddies and not be tempted to be drawn back. So, but the thing of it is, is that Jesus accepted him where he was. Yep. And he he communed with him. He spent time with him. And it was through that encounter then that the man's life was changed and he became different than he was. But see, that old Pharisee spirit 
wants to say, oh, you're no good. You can't come in this church. You know, you better get cleaned up first. Well, that's not Jesus. He's you know, not that way. <laughs> yeah, and we have to be careful, um, us churchgoers, you know, when someone comes in not looking quite spiffy as us, right. you know, show yourself friendly, yeah. you know. I mean, I I came pretty rough and you came pretty rough. Yeah. Our kids were kind of, you know, they didn't, you know, we were kind of poor. They didn't look so spiffy. Our house, we had no electricity. We had no running water. Uh, it was our choice. Mm -hmm. But um, people loved us. Well, thank God, you know, they, they did open their heart to us. and We were vegetarians and they brought us a bunch of meat. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Funny. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. So here's Zacchaeus. He, he makes a declaration to the Lord. He called him Lord. Yep. You got to call him Lord. Amen. You got to let him be Lord. Amen. And he says, I'm going to give half my goods to the poor, and if I've ripped anybody off, I'll restore it four times. So did Jesus make him do that? No, Jesus didn't make him do it. We, we don't really don't know what happened at that lunch. You know, I sometimes I wish I was there to just see what took place. I mean, did Jesus preach a sermon? or uh, I, 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 Myself, I sort of think he was just sitting there being Jesus, you know? He, yeah. Just the love of God. You gotta understand now, here's a man sitting there with Jesus. Now, the Bible said that Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us. So when Jesus walked the earth, God worked, walked the earth. So this man had lunch with God. He's sitting there having lunch with God. So the presence of the Lord is there. The love of God is there. The glory of God is there as they're sitting there eating lunch. And so, so I don't know what Jesus said to him, but it brought a change in this man's life. Well, I, I think even just, you know, sometimes when you're in your own living room and you're just talking to God and, and his presence comes over, you know, he, mm -hmm. he you know, it's, it's being in the presence of the Lord, you know, yeah. um, he touches our heart. Well, and, you know, that's one thing I wanted to say, too, is that, you know, we're talking about an encounter with Jesus. Here's Zacchaeus. This is his initial encounter with Jesus. But for all of us, uh, we're not done encountering Jesus because he keeps speaking to us. He keeps revealing himself to us by the Holy Spirit and through his word. And as he does, we're changed. I know God has been doing some tremendous change in my heart. Uh, even in recent days, you know, and so I've been walking with the Lord 43 years, but he's not done with me. I found that out for sure. Mm. And so, you know, draw near to God. He'll draw near to you. So, um, but I want us to think just a little bit about this, how he said, he said to the Lord. Now, there's other people, no doubt, sitting there. Mm -hmm. And they heard also, but he was talking to the Lord. Sometimes people will say something for the benefit of others. I've seen that in our ministry where someone really didn't, I don't think they really had a, a change of heart, but they said the right things, mm -hmm. but actually their hearts weren't changed. But this man said to the Lord, you know, I give half my goods to the poor. I restore those who I've ripped off four times. Well, this reveals. Didn't say ripped off. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, paraphrase. So, um, Tom Shanklin version. Tom Shanklin version. But you see, what he said about what he was going to do revealed the change in his heart. You know, we know that we're not saved by our works, right? No. But something happens in the heart in which there's a transformation. Zacchaeus had a transformation of his heart. And out of that transformation, then he made a declaration of where he was going, what he's going to do. And so I believe faith came into his heart. And as a result, he made this declaration and his life changed at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And your life can change too. I know in my case, when I encountered the Lord, uh, I was delivered from drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, I think sometimes I thought, well, that's it. That's all that needs to happen. But <laughs> there's a lot more that God continues to do in my life. <clears throat> so then in verse 9, it says, Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. So this is something that happened today. Jesus said, Today salvation came. See, now he was the son of Abraham his whole life. By birth, he was part of a covenant people. But salvation didn't come until this change came into his heart, until he had a conversion, until he had a true change of heart to the Lord. And Jesus said, salvation has come. Salvation means that uh, he was rescued from, being, from perishing, from destruction, from separation from God. So he said, this day salvation has come to this house. Well, how did Jesus know? He well, he, he heard what Zacchaeus said. He knew the sincerity of his heart. He had discernment to know what was going on. And he recognized this man's heart's changed. He's different now. And salvation has come to this house. And then verse 10, he continues, Jesus continues. He says, for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. I love that. Mm -hmm. That, you know, it reminds me of the, the story Jesus told about the good shepherd who left the 99 and went after the lost. To think of it that the Lord comes after us. He doesn't just sit there and, and wait and say, well, that no good sinner, you know, they just keep on messing up. And sometimes that's the way people are. Because people look at your past, but Jesus looks at your potential. He looks at your future. He looks at your future. He looks what he can do in your life so he came to earth to seek and to save the lost that's why he came I mean understand he you know it, it he came down he was exalted in heaven he came down he became a baby he was born of a virgin he he lived on the earth you know among us and why did he do it he came to seek and to save the lost and then we know, you know, he went to the cross to die for our sins as the sacrifice for our sins so that we could be forgiven. And then, of course, he was buried and then he rose again and then poured out the Holy Spirit. Um, but you see, we have forgiveness of sins through the blood that he shed on that cross. And that's why you experienced that forgiveness and that's why Zacchaeus experience that forgiveness and that's why you can experience that forgiveness you won't want to go back you won't want to go back mm -hmm. but be like Zacchaeus you know just go all Come out down from that tree let him have his way in your life you know Zacchaeus could have stayed up there he could have but could have. <laughs> I don't think it was in his nature. He wanted Jesus so bad, you know. Yeah, but, you know, he could have, you know, I'm just thinking of people, you know. They just, nah, it's okay. You go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah, I'll catch you at another, <laughs> another meeting or another time or later, later, later. Manana, later, manana. later, later. Today is the day of salvation. Mm, today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the acceptable time. So if you've never received Jesus, Zacchaeus received Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Bible said he stands at the door and knocks. And if any man will open, I will come in and I will sup with him. So you can not only have a physical dinner with Jesus, but you can have a spiritual supper with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He'll come into your life. He'll give you living water. He'll feed you the bread of life. Uh, he'll give you eternal life. And you will never be the same. Mm -mm. So mm -hmm. open your heart. If you've never done this before, open your heart. And maybe this is an encounter. Maybe you have done it, but you need to come back to the Lord today. You can or pray. a refreshing. Yeah. You know, we're, we're going through a hard times and we need a refreshing. Mm -hmm. You know. So pray with me. Say, Dear Father, mm -hmm. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you he came to seek and save the lost. Mm. Father, forgive me of my sins. I turn my life over and I say Jesus is my Lord. Mm. Thank you for saving me. 
forgiving me and changing me. Yes, change. I'm making a choice today. <clears throat> In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, Praise God. I want to encourage you also, if you've never been baptized, be baptized. I've got a link up above here. You can click and I've got a teaching on water baptism. It's very important also. Um, just before we close, Susan, why don't you pray for the people? We'll just pray. And whatever the need that you have in your life, let's believe God for a miracle in your life today. Amen. Father God, I thank you for everybody that is listening to this uh, now and in the future. I thank you, Father God, that you have come for them. Yes, Lord. I thank you that you see them. Mm -hmm. I thank you that you want them. I thank you that they want you. Mm. I thank you, Father God, that you're drawing them and they say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for your love, unconditional love and your forgiveness. You shed your blood on the, on the cross for, to forgive us and you rose again. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, you are life changing. I thank you, Father God, for touching everyone that is listening and meeting their physical, spiritual, and mental needs. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, I hope to see you next time. You can subscribe to our channel, get on our website, send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And the in the sun's meantime, coming in. What's that? Sun. I can see the sun. The sun. In the meantime, God bless you. We'll see you next time.